So in this video, I want to talk about ganglionic blockers. Ganglionic blockers are NN antagonists. So NN stands for nicotinic neural. So these are the receptors that sit in postganglionic somas of sympathetic and parasympathetic neurons. So if you look here, this is a sympathetic input to an effector organ described with this pre- and postganglionic two-neuron system giving input. And here the parasympathetic side, we find them right here and this at the second at the postganglionic neuron. And with a ganglionic blocker, we basically block the sympathetic and the parasympathetic input onto the specific effector organ. That's what we describe as autonomic tone, because most of our effector organs are under dual control. That means the parasympathetic and the sympathetic are fighting for their input. They both give input, but as in real life, almost one is a winner. And it's usually the parasympathetic, because we are rest and digest creatures. So at rest, the parasympathetic is the winner. We can think about this like a, a tug of war. If you have, don't have any autonomic tone, you, your rope would be still uh, right there. And now the sympathetic fights for it, pulls it on one side. The parasympathetic fights for it, pulls it on the opposite side. But this parasympathetic is strong, it's a winner. So where would we end up? What, how would we describe our autonomic tone? Well, so the parasympathetic draws very heavily on that side, the sympathetic a little bit on the other side, so we would end up somewhere here, and that would be our autonomic tone. So if we use now a ganglionic blocker, where would we end up on the rope? So this would be our autonomic tone, and that's our position at rest. We are talking here about resting tone. And now when we block it, we would come closely to no autonomic tone, because kind of that was a purpose, that was a ganglionic blocker. So let's use a specific example. Let's figure out the effect of a ganglionic blocker on heart rate. So the heart rate without any autonomic tone would be about 100 beats per minute. Now we all know that we don't have a, a heart rate of 100 beats per minute. And the reason is because there's tone, the parasympathetic, lowers heart rate. And probably if we would have only parasympathetic input, we would end somewhere at 60 beats per minute. But actually the sympathetic increases heart rate. With only sympathetic tone, we would be probably at 110 beats per minute. So what's our uh, resting heart rate? Well, it's about 70 beats per minute. Now that's at rest, our resting heart rate. So now if you use a ganglionic blocker, where is our heart rate going to go? Well, it's going to go up. Because see, we're going to go more close to the no ANS tone because we block everything. So we're going to go to the opposite of the parasympathetic nervous system effect. So we already mentioned heart rate is going to go up compared to at rest. Let's think about a couple of other examples. So what's going to happen to GI motility? So GI motility is increased by the parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest. Well, there's a little bit of input of the sympathetic relaxing GI motility, but the winner is increased GI motility. So with a ganglionic blocker, we're going to have the opposite, and therefore we're going to have relaxation of GI motility, so a decreased tone of GI motility, which can lead as a side effect to constipation. And that's exactly what we're going to see with ganglionic blockers. What's going to happen to our bronchioles? Well, the parasympathetic tone is bronchoconstriction, so now the opposite, we're going to get bronchodilation. Well, there are a couple of examples for organs where there's not this dual control scenario, where there's not this fighting from the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. We have a couple of organ systems that are almost exclusively under sympathetic control. And here are a couple of Im very important examples. Number one are the blood vessels. The blood vessels are um, exclusively under sympathetic control. The neuronal um, tone is vasoconstriction, and therefore if we block it, we get vasodilation. So our blood vessels are going to dilate. 
and that's going to lead to a decrease in blood pressure. And in fact, ganglionic blocker were one of the first medications ever used for the treatment of hypertension. Now, the ventricles are also mostly under sympathetic control, and so they mediate an increased contractility. So therefore, if you block it, contractility is going to go down. It's going to go down. Sweat glands are also exclusively under sympathetic control. Therefore, if you block it, you're going to decrease sweating. So there's a decrease in sweating, or we call this also anhydrosis. These are all effects of the ganglionic blockers. And you can already imagine that these are not good drugs. They're also not used anymore. They're very old drugs. But why we still teach them and why they always get tested is because if you understand how what ganglionic blockers do to all these effector organs, you actually understand a lot about autonomic nervous system physiology. And that's the reason why we still teach them. This concludes the video on ganglionic blockers.